So we're at QuakeCon, we've, we've seen pretty much everything that we're going to see. Um, we've seen a lot of hands-off stuff, we've seen some hands-on stuff. Uh, so sadly we haven't had as much hands-on time as we wanted. So this preview is going to be all-encompassing. Um, starting with what we have played. Uh, Danny G behind the camera has had a go at uh, Doom VR uh, and I've played uh, a Fallout 4 VR experience um, which is uh, based at the garage base um, it's a wave based uh, with some raiders charging in and uh, followed by a death claw at the end um, it's got the usual VR thing where you're, th you're throwing your position and you're teleporting between positions and that's not something I'm ever personally going to get used to. Um, I find that to be quite a challenging way to move around in the game space, but until they come up with a better solution, I think that's what we're going to be getting with a lot of VR games in terms of navigating the world. Uh, we didn't see much beyond the limited demo, but we did speak to uh, one of the reps from id, uh, who told us that as far as he knows, the open world, the whole open world of Fallout 4 will be available in the VR, dem in the VR version of the game when it ships next year. Um, the visual fidelity, I mean, Fallout 4 is not the, the Christmas game on the, in the world, so, you know, it looked pretty good. Um, I have to say, uh, having the, the, the teleport trick certainly makes dealing with Death Claws quite uh, helpful. And for the purposes of the demo, we had uh, a double barrel shotgun that didn't require any reloading. So that was quite helpful at taking down the Death, uh, the death Claw as well. Um, the other things that we've seen, um, we played um, Shadow Warrior 2, uh, not a Bethesda game. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to write about that. Uh, we'll have an interview coming up on the site about that very soon. Um, we're also going to have a look at Strafe. Um, again, not directly associated with Bethesda uh, or QuakeCon, but here nonetheless. In terms of the Bethesda games, obviously uh, QuakeCon came and we had a look at Quake Champions. Uh, we spoke to Tim Willits, uh, and you can see that interview on Game Reactor at some point. Um, it's fast, uh, it looks very fast. There's lots of different characters, uh, champions, and they all have slightly different stats, but the the base baseline speed of the game is fast and furious. It's about rocket jumps, it's about, uh, uh, you know, crazy weapons. It's It, it looks like Quake uh, of old. Um, but with kind of the modern innovations from the genre that we've started to see with games like Overwatch taken into account. Um, and judging from the reaction from the assembled crowd here, it went down quite well. So that's going into beta next year with around a dozen characters and with more to come on online thereafter. Um, PC only um, at this stage, but who knows what the future might hold if it, if it takes off and they, and they find a way of making that kind of really twitchy, super fast gameplay work on console. The other games that we looked at, we saw two arcane games, which we can talk about in the same breath. Uh, we saw Prey and Dishonored 2. Now, I am looking forward to these on a personal level. Um, I love the first Dishonored, uh, which means I'm looking forward to both of these, really. Um, Prey looks great it looks like a mixture of dishonored with a dash of alien isolation um, soma uh, another recent kind of sci-fi horror game there's elements of that in there in terms of enemy design but it looks like its own game as well it's it's a bit more open-ended than dishonored uh, there's some zero g you can scale the whole of the outside of the space station so in a sense there's an open world element to it um, but it looks really, really good. Uh, and some of the systemic gameplay looks like it's gonna open all sorts of possibilities. Loads of emergent options for the player to kind of experiment with, which must make testing it a nightmare, but it looks super polished. Uh, it looks like an arcane game. Uh, there's that kind of gothic edged sub of design. Uh, there's an opulence to it. The, the, the gold trim on the staircases, it, it does make you think of some of the more um, uh, the more extravagant locations in the first Dishonored. Um, and similarly, Dishonored 2 is obviously a nice progression from the original game. So there's a, it starts off in Dunwall, but there is a new city uh, and a new kind of political situation for the player to take into account. Uh, the design looks great. 
Um, obviously, the big talking point uh, is the split characters. Um, players will be able to play as Corvo from the first game, and they'll also be able to play as Emily uh, and experience uh, a different set of skills and abilities. Um, personally, I'm super excited about that one, and I can't wait for that to release later on this year. And based on the hands-off uh, demo that we were privy to, I you know there's certainly scope for some really violent action. Um, I tend to, like a lot of people, I think I tend to play somewhere between the the, the, the two, uh, rather than going from extreme to extreme and playing either, uh, you know, the super stealthy or super violent and uh, kind of mix up the gameplay. But for people who want to experience that game multiple times, multiple playthroughs, you know, you can, you, for example, you can play that one without uh, using any of the uh, magical abilities and you can play it completely stealthily or you can just shoot everybody with flaming arrows and uh, slice their heads off and stuff so um, there's lots going on in Dishonored, and it, Dishonored 2 and it looks great and then there's Doom um, obviously Doom's out and about and it's been out in the wild uh, we've uh, we had the announcement uh, that to the, the new DLC is now out there um, we haven't had a, a very a long look at that, um, but uh, we did find out that in, um, originally it was Certain Affinity that handled the multiplayer when, when id were taking care of the overall development of the game, but now uh, they're working with uh, the Battlecry team, um, another Bethesda studio, and they're handling some of the multiplayer stuff in-house themselves. So I think it's they've kind of brought it home a little bit more. Um, so that's it, really. Uh, there's not a huge amount of hands-on to tell you about, but we did get to see some a lot of new gameplay and uh, get an idea about what they're working on. We're certainly super excited to see more of Prey, which is coming out next year on, on the you know the big three PC, PS4, Xbox One. So we're really looking forward to seeing more of that. And Dishonored later this year, Quake and Beta next year. Um, Lots, lots for, for fans of Bethesda and id and Arcane to look forward to and um, we've certainly had a good time here at QuakeCon 16.